Hey guys, uh, so I wanted to do a series of short videos just to help people understand C++ a little bit better. I've been getting some really good feedback on uh, the Unreal tutorials and I just hit 10,000 views uh, on those very recently which I know doesn't sound like a lot but I am still very grateful uh, for each and every view. But anyways, I wanted to do a really quick and simple sort of series of videos on how to understand C++ a little bit better because if you've done the tutorial so far and you get C++ that's fine but if you don't get C++ you're gonna have a hard time sort of understanding why you're doing the things that you're doing and and that uh, so these videos are gonna be like a really basic description but even if you do think you know quite a lot about C++ you might still uh, learn a few things from these uh, videos, or maybe not, who knows, but anyhow, let's get into it. Um, so I'll start, what are games made from? Well, games are made from way more things than I've got written down there. I have light, pawn, and mesh components, but there are just hundreds of different things. There are networking components, there are uh, sound components within the game, there are just, there, there are a ridiculous amount of things. Um, that make up a game, right? When you're playing a game, there are just so many things going on, especially 3D games. Um, there, there's just so much to it, and 2D games as well, but anyhow, why does Unreal Engine use C++? One of the biggest reasons is because C++ is fast, but it also uses classes. It is what we call an object-oriented language. So what are the use of these classes? Well, the thing about classes are they are perfect for describing things, right? So for example, if I was a class, you could you could write a class to describe me, uh, and it would have properties like name equals Ruben, height equals 180 centimeters, uh, country equals New Zealand, things like that that describe me, right? So you could write a class about me. So in a, in a game where we have a lot of things going on, using classes makes quite a lot of sense. So for example, uh, a light component, we could write a class to describe the intensity of the light, where the light is positioned in the game, the type of light, um, the light's color, just so many different things, right? And so that's kind of the power of that. Uh, C++ is also very portable, which means it runs on a lot of different machines, uh, and that's also something that I think the Unreal Engine tries to achieve. Uh, really quickly, I know I used the same picture for the header file and CPP file things, but it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, the header file is basically where we declare things, right? So, for example, um, we would write out each property and then we would use it, right? The CPP file is where we actually use the thing. So the header file, we might say, so for example, if I was modeling a light, if I was writing a class about a light, uh, my header file might say, this light is going to have a certain intensity, but we would actually say what that intensity is in the CPP file and we would actually do something with that intensity in the CPP file. So the header file is kind of where we define everything and the CPP is where we actually work with those things that we have defined, if that makes sense. Um, so let's move on. In C++ you want to store data. Now if you don't know anything about C++, the idea is that in programming, we are always storing variables. So, take Call of Duty for example. Every time you shoot your gun, the program or the game is keeping track of how much ammo you have left in your gun. Right? So, if it says there is 34 bullets left in your gun, somewhere in the system's memory, that number is sitting. 34. Um, so, for example, here I've used the player's level. So in standard C++, we would say int player level equals zero. In Unreal, we say int 32 player level equals zero. So whenever you're using Unreal C++ and you want to store a number, you would use int 32. So when we were making that class about me, we would say int 32 Ruben's height equals 180, right? 
And then we also have some string examples here. There are more data types like floats and other decimal types and things like that. But for now, I'm just covering numbers and strings just to keep things simple. Uh, so here we would say in standard C++, string username equals xx noob killer xx. <laughs> um, and then Unreal uses if string. So it's pretty similar. Like if string is quite similar to string, but um, yeah, that, that's just Unreal's version of string. So you might be thinking, why all this, right? Why can't I just type int player level equals zero or string username equals noob killer? Why do I have to use these weird types that are different from traditional C++? The reason for this is because it needs to be portable, right? And if you make an int, it might not run on some machines the way that you want it to run on other machines. So when the Unreal team created int32, they created it with the idea of portability in mind. So the int32 will be very consistent across all uh, machines. And the same goes for fstring. The, uh, the last thing I'm going to cover in this video really, really briefly is just collections of data. Right? And if you ever hear the term container types, this is what that means. In standard C++, vector string current players online, and in Unreal C++, TRA string current players online. Okay, so basically, let me, let me break this down and explain it a little bit. When we say TRA, we're saying, okay, we want to make an array. And inside those little spiky brackets, we're saying, we want our array to hold strings. Then we give it a name, current players online, and then we just put a little semicolon on the end there just so it knows that the line has ended. So we always put semicolons on the end of all lines. The use of this is that we can add several strings to this. So think of it as a container for multiple strings, right? If we want to store the current players online, we're going to need more than one string. Because what if there's 12 players online, right? Well, we could create 12 different if strings or we could just create a T-Array and store them all in our one T-Array. It's a lot more uh, convenient, basically. So that's kind of the idea with containers. I'm not going to go super in-depth with those, but it's the same deal. Uh, Unreal has their own container type. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. I'm going to you know slowly go more in-depth as the series continues. But anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.